Almost all half marathons around the world are dominated by one of three nationalities, Kenyans, Ethiopians and Ugandans. In today's race we're going to be watching, which is the Cardiff half marathon, there was something pretty unbelievable that happened. Here you can see the runners in yellow. These runners in yellow are Team Uganda, the fastest running team that has been seen around the world in recent years. They have the likes of Jacob Kiblimo, Joshua Cheptegei, and some really big names. Winning this race was going to be easy for Team Uganda, or so they thought. However, something unbelievable was about to happen, featuring a mishap and a upset within the African ranks. You can see early on, a lot of these runners were making moves, trying to increase the pace. It did some damage and initially the Ugandans worked together very well to split up most of this lead group. Here you can see Dowie Griffith who was a local runner, a Welsh runner, a mountain runner and he was now dropped from the group because of an aggressive surge. All that the Ugandans had to do now was drop an Australian runner and a Kenyan runner. Now everyone expected the Australian runner to be the next athlete to drop off the pack. But what happened next shocked everyone. As you can see here, we're around 19 minutes into this race. This is Rayner. Rayner is the Australian runner who has tucked himself right at the back of this lead group, allowing the Team Ugandans to do the most of the work at the front. He was just hanging on for dear life. A lot of the commentators truly thought that he was really running way too fast and probably wouldn't even make it to the finish line of this race. It was brutal and at times the Team Ugandan runners were deploying tactics of trying to disperse around the road so they would spread out, confusing Rayner and the Kenyan to try and choose who to run behind. This at times caused people to almost get tripped as you just saw there. 28 minutes into the race, the Kenyan decided to put his foot down and show his whereabouts. Here are some of the trailing runners including Mohamed Adan of England and we also have a huge breakaway taking place up front. Two of the Ugandans have fallen behind, the Kenyan is now taking on the pace while Rayner of Australia is still with them. Now this was getting a bit interesting now because we're 34 minutes into the race and this is a half marathon. These guys here run half marathons in around about one hour exactly because they are elite professional runners. Here is another view of Dowie Griffith. He is now in ninth place in this race working his way up. Look at this. This is truly phenomenal. Ugandan have regrouped once again and they were pouring on the pace while Dowie Griffiths was running out all by himself in no man's land. I think that a lot of people were expecting the Australian runner to have dropped behind at this point. However, he was simply buying his time and in actual fact, he was about to unleash a pretty incredible surge that would test every single African runner in this lead pack, including the little Kenyan there in the middle. A lot of the Ugandans had tried a lot at this point to try and disperse the Kenyan and the Australian runner but it didn't work and in the process they dropped two of their own athletes. Now all this meant is that the Kenyan decided to take his turn at the front pushing on the pace even more. This meant that the two Ugandans that were remaining were starting to panic because their team had now been broken up and was slowly being chased down by Dowie Griffith here in 8th place. Rayner of Australia was still holding on 45 minutes into the race and he still looked like he had a lot left to give. The Kenyan runner in the middle had tried to surge a couple of times and it had done a lot of damage. As you can see the fifth place runner also Uganda is currently around about 20 meters behind Rayner of Australia and he can't get back onto this chase croup because he is seriously struggling with the lactic acid in his legs. Here are the mile splits down the bottom, 443, 435, 451, not too shabby. Ugandan's back in control, taking the lead once again, but that did really upset the Kenyan and he decided that he was going to go back into the lead and try and take one last opportunity here at 53 minutes into the race to try and win. 
He knew that he couldn't out sprint all of these runners and that if he wanted to win this race, he was going to have to run hard now and try and get away from everyone. It wasn't working though. Rainer was still there, two Ugandans were still there, and there was another two Ugandans behind, not even to mention Dowie Griffiths was now catching up with the runners in 6th and 7th place. Here was a huge moment guys, we're only a mile away from the finish and the Kenyan has been dropped, I can't believe it. There you will see a hand sign from the Ugandan on the left signalling to his compatriot to move over and use tactics against Rayner in order to try and drop him. This almost worked, in fact they did have a couple of metres between themselves and the Australian runner. However, he stayed true and honest to himself and maintained a good pace all the way through to the finish. What happened next I could never see happening. Look at this. Rayner decided that he fancied his chances of putting in his sprint finish. He hadn't led this race until this very moment in the race, one hour after entering. This was phenomenal. Rayner was now winning the race and not just winning, but winning in style. Look at how far ahead he was to second and third place. He had put such an aggressive sprint finish that he had managed to win this race in an unofficial time of one hour and one minute. Not the fastest of times, however, the perfect tactical race in my opinion. Rayner was in disbelief at how he had beaten Team Uganda and the Kenyan runners. I think he was pretty chuffed and happy with how he timed the use of his tactics in this half marathon race. At the end of this race he gave interviews, he had photo shoots and of course went for a recovery cool down jog. He made friends with some of the South African runners and the English runners and got chatting with all of the other competitors in this race. Half marathon races are absolutely brutal. They are a race that can make or break a professional runner's career because think about it guys, it's basically a whole hour of sprinting. If you've ever watched a pro runner, you will know that they run around 4.5 minutes per mile pace for a half marathon. This to put into perspective is around 33 seconds per 200 meters. Try sprinting a 200 meters at your local track, if you get 33 seconds or just over, you are running the pace that they run for one whole hour. This is a pace that most humans cannot even sprint at and it was genuinely mind boggling how Rayner managed to defeat those Team Ugandan athletes, even though there was four of them, all seemingly working together using tactics to not only defeat Rayner, the Australian champion, but to defeat the Kenyan as well. I was slightly disappointed in how small the Kenyan field was in that year's Cardiff Half Marathon. However, the Ugandan field was the strongest I've seen in almost every race I've ever watched. It was a very, very hearty effort by them, but it still just wasn't good enough to break down Rayner. He was too strong, he had too many hurdles to overcome, and as a result, he just jumped over every single one. I think that Rayner was buying his time perfectly, he didn't make a move until the very last kilometer, which is exactly how track runners are trained, and on top of this, he seemed pretty fresh. He crossed the line in one hour and one minute, which is around about 4 minutes and 37 or 4 minutes and 38 seconds per mile. It's not too shabby if you ask me. I think that Rain has had a pretty decent career and he's also notably paced Eli Kipchoge in his sub 2 hour marathon. Rainer is apparently still with Nike as far as I'm aware, although I'm not 100% certain. I think a lot of the Australian runners prefer Nike and Hoka One One over some of the other sponsors. Personally, I think the heat in Australia must be a nightmare for training. A lot of the Australian and New Zealand runners tend to take trips out to Kenya and Ethiopia, even places in Europe to do their training for most of the year. Unless they were to wake up at 3 or 4 in the morning, it would be unbearable to try and train once the sun is up in Australia and New Zealand during the summers. 35, 45 and even 50 degrees Celsius being recorded 
it's just impossible for running anything faster than 7 minute mile pace. A lot of these guys will probably sweat and then the second they do, it'll evaporate instantly which creates a feeling of humidity, clamminess and almost as if you are in a chamber. It's very very scary and sometimes can cause heat stroke and exhaustion. This is something that could become life altering so a lot of these athletes have to take precautions. Whereas places like Kenya and Ethiopia have rainy seasons and often is a bit more tolerable heat of around 25 to 35 celsius when it comes to temperature. I've never personally known anyone to go train in Australia because it would be unbearable However, they do have some really nice quality tracks and some really top running clubs. So I would recommend going there on holiday. And one of my best friends from back when I was in school actually went to go live there with his family. I miss him and I wonder what he's doing today. I recently saw pictures of him on Facebook and I thought it was quite interesting to see how different his life was and how everything had changed since he went to Australia. I also enjoy watching the likes of Kenyans and Ethiopians train and compete in these countries because it tests their limit in how they can overcome the conditions in these different countries. For example, when Kenyans and Ethiopians race in Great Britain in wet and muddy cross country races, they tend to do awful because they are not used to those types of conditions, the weather, the terrain, it's very difficult. Thank you for watching today's video guys, if you did enjoy the video please leave a like and subscribe if you are new to my channel. Here on this channel we got the Olympics coming up very very soon, I'll be covering those races and giving my reactions in live streams, so definitely leave likes and subscriptions if you are new here to stay up to date with all of that. I'll be making a video every day so please tune in tomorrow and I will catch you guys then.